All right. So we should be rocking here. So I can hear you. The people can hear you. What's happening? All right, guys. So wait for a few of you here to join. Encoding overloaded. Consider turning down the volume. Okay, maybe that's better. Um, so give a give it a few minutes for people to join here. Having some audio technical difficulties, so really hoping that this works. So let me guys know if my audio sounds good. Also let me know if you can hear Joe. Joe, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, <laughs> I suppose I'm just some uh, Twitter trader that uh, enjoys trading Bitcoin. There you go. It. All the intro yeah. you need. So everyone, uh, was everyone able to hear Joe there? You guys in quarantine, bro? Yeah, we're in quarantine here, but it's 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 pretty lax where I'm at. I'm on the west coast of Canada. Um, and it's like, you know, it's not like some places, like all of our public transit is still going, parks are still open and stuff, but they're just telling people to social distance. I don't really know. Um, the case numbers here are pretty low. So obviously that's a good thing, but it's definitely nothing like what's going on in California or New York and stuff like that. We also, we've just actually been extended. Um, so we had done an original three weeks. And they've extended it for another two weeks. But I mean, we pretty much the most strict um, lockdown that's probably happened so far. Um, everything's pretty much closed. You can only go to a pharmacy or a um, or a grocer. Um, and yeah, I mean, you're not allowed to leave your house, bro. Um, it's pretty much martial law at the moment. Really? So, <laughs> so like what happens if yeah. you get caught outside? Uh, arrested. Um, or quite a big fine. Seriously? Oh man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like that at all here. Like we were in the, I was in the park yesterday with my girlfriend. We went and rode our bikes. We were hanging out, you know, having some beers on the grass. People were obviously sitting, you know, we were not sitting near anyone, but it's pretty lax here. So I guess we're pretty fortunate. That's crazy. That's that serious over there. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And then obviously what makes it worse is, um, you know, like all restaurants are closed. So, I mean, you pretty much got to cook every single meal. Um, so yeah, it's it's been tough. And I mean, there's there's no like Uber Eats is pretty much closed down as well. Really? So you can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't even order or, or um, phone in and pick up. I mean, it's just gone. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a intense another two weeks. And I mean, we're heading into winter, so I, I would probably imagine that it's just going to get extended again. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's really, <laughs> that's really rough. I didn't realize it was that bad for you guys. Uh, it's definitely not that bad here in Canada. Um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on this whole coronavirus thing? Are you like a conspiracy theorist? Do you think the government's just trying to find a way to microchip us through a vaccine? Where's your head at? I think it's more on a political level. Um, I think that you obviously got to follow the money here. Um, but what I would imagine happening right now is that all the massive industries around the world lobbying their governments. Um, and I would imagine new new industries as well, um, like cannabis and that type of thing. Um, I think that everyone's kind of got a got a voice, um, who, who has got a voice or big enough union behind them with a big enough paycheck can pretty much get anything open. Um, and I think that's probably, probably happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then you'd probably have to like just go on a more really macro level and just see like which which countries are kind of following the same the same routines or the same uh, lockdown measures and um you know like what they what they're kind of getting rid of because i mean we, we can't even buy alcohol in south africa or all, all, all cigarettes that's crazy if the liquor stores close here i think there'd be a rebellion um like honestly yeah. i think people would be in the streets like marching so maybe i should be a little bit yeah. more positive about my situation so because <laughs> i could still go outside and do stuff so um well, let's uh, let's just start talking about crypto here, because obviously that's what people came here to see. So I'm hoping the technical difficulties aren't too bad. I am getting some sort of air from YouTube saying it's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. So you guys may experience some buffering. 
I don't know how to fucking fix that, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, so if the video is, is shit, let me know. Um, I, I would rather not have to, uh, you know, pre-record this. I would rather, uh, you know, do this live with you guys. But if it's really, really bad, uh, you know, let me know and I can consider, you know, trying to do this a different way. It's telling me that the encoder is fucking, I think I've just got a shitty MacBook is the fucking problem. It could also just be a couple of the settings on your, on your OBS. But um, yeah, I mean, you you were complaining that you're 30. Yeah, like I'm 37, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, dude. Yeah, if you're struggling, you can imagine. One of my biggest like technical accomplishments was finding out how to get MT4 to run on a Mac, um, and it just involved downloading a program. So uh, I used to be the tech guy for my family, but now I got a younger brother who's like eight years younger than me, and he just blows me out of the water with all the stuff he can do. So. Uh, definitely showing my age, but let's talk about crypto here. So what we're going to do here, guys, is, uh, you know, I the reason I wanted to chat with Joe is he's a trader that I respect. Um, you know, he does price action, but he also has, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of other stuff that he does in terms of not just looking at the candlesticks chart. I know you use pivots, if I'm not mistaken, uh, among some other things. So um, I always like talking to traders who view the market a little differently than I do. Um you know, I, I had that uh, video kind of podcast I did with Captain Coley, uh, Zoran, that got a lot of views and a lot of people liked it. Uh, so I want to do these things kind of more often because I do think it's valuable, especially if you're learning how to trade, um, to see a lot of different things and find a system uh, and tools that are going to work for you. I think one thing that can really uh, kind of do you in as a trader is to be like, okay, well, you know, just to use Zoran's uh, you know, technique, Ichimoku is what I'm going to do. And you try and force Ichimoku to work for you, when in reality, perhaps Ichimoku works like it does for Zoran, but you also need to learn a little bit of price action or some trend analysis, or maybe there's another indicator that you can use. There's a lot of ways to skin this cat. Uh, so don't pigeonhole yourself. I do think, you know, uh, I'm not telling you to, you know, have every indicator on your chart, but I do think, you know, you need to try a few things and find out what works for you. Moving averages are not something I use, but they can be a great way to determine the trend. And maybe that's something that you need help doing. So you need to find someone who can teach you how to do them. Same goes here. You might pick something up from this conversation that's useful to you. Uh, you know, maybe all of a sudden you might start using pivots on your chart. And you're starting to, you know, kind of refine an edge by adding that tool to your toolkit. So I think it's always good to keep an open mind with this kind of stuff. So I'm excited to kind of really quickly here. I think the plan is I'm going to give you my view on Bitcoin. I'll do kind of a five minute summary here on trading view. And then I want to pass it over to Joe and I want to see what he says. Uh, we have not discussed um, before this what our thoughts are. So we haven't shared any levels. We haven't done any of that. So I'm going to be interested. You'll be seeing this guy's uh, live just like I am, you know, him kind of marking down the chart. Um, so myself. I'm going to start here on the monthly. I'll break it down to the H4. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of give you my plan going into this week, a trade that I'm going to be looking at. And then I'm going to pass it over to Joe's screen. Um, and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so it looks like there was no image. I, I did that on purpose. Uh, image is back. He says, the internet in Canada is the issue. Yeah, I blame Justin Trudeau. Um, okay, so monthly time frame and I know my homie crypto cred just did a top-down video and cred and I traded very similar flavor of price action so some of the stuff that he said uh, is probably going to be very similar to some of the stuff I say right now um, so in my uh, kind of verbiage of how I trade this is an interesting area to me in price this is what I would call a breaker some people will call it ignored uh, supply. Some people call it a demand zone, a supply zone, uh, an SR box. You can call it whatever the hell you want. Uh, but to me, this is an area of interest. And the reason why uh, is this is the up candle that then proceeded to make the down move that basically took out all of these lows here, right? So there's multiple monthly lows. You gotta remember this is a monthly tribe frame. These ones do not count because all of these lows were taken out by this candle. But every low after here, right? So this one, this one, and this one were taken out in this move here. Um, and then we came in, we kind of tested this area, and we ended up testing uh, this area again. But this is why that candle's significant to me. This is the up move that then led to this downward price action, which created our you know short-term bottom for the time being that led us on that next rally. 
Um, so this is an area of interest to me. And if you go and watch one of my streams from a long time ago, I think it was even back in February, uh, I was talking about this monthly close. So it would have been the end of February, early March. I was talking about this monthly close. And I said, if we close the monthly within the body of this candle, I think that's going to lead us to some sort of a, a ranging environment. Uh, you've got to remember that this is a monthly time frame. So all of the up and down, all of the choppiness, all of the trades that you've taken, you've won, you've lost, have all happened in this one single candle on the time frame. So if you are if you are someone who's impatient, someone who is uh, you know ADD a little bit, you're staring at the charts all the time, the monthly time frame, you got to remember it moves slow. So all of that trading that's happened, all of that craziness that's gone on, it's all been in this one single candle. And as you dial in to lower time frames, you're essentially zooming in and breaking this candle into you know four weekly candles or you know 30 daily candles, whatever it is. Um, so to me, this is an area of interest. Technically, you could say that this closed as a swing failure pattern below this low by closing back above the wick here. The body of this candle wicked below this low, a crazy wick, albeit, uh, but uh, closed back above. So technically, you could frame that as bullish. Um, I've talked about this in previous streams. I do think there's this macro looming um, you know, systemic risk of what's going on in the equities market. Um, you know, what's going on with coronavirus where, you know, TA is great, uh, but there are certain instances where, you know, if, if something happens and they extend the lockdown or if the stock market takes another dive, I do think it can negatively affect BTC, whether you like it or not. Um, you know, everyone seems to be a equities expert these days on Twitter, um, you know, talking about their take on the SPX, blah, blah, blah. I personally am not considering myself an expert on equities or anything of the sort. But in my opinion, Bitcoin generally has been very, very closely correlated to the SPX and not in a correlation that people seem to think people are like it's not a one to one when the SPX goes up, Bitcoin goes up. And if they go separate, the correlation is no longer there. Um, my opinion is that Bitcoin is a risk asset. And because of this, any the macro direction of the stock exchange has been basically mirrored in the movement of crypto. And I know I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but I'll make this quick before I get back to marking up the charts. But if you look at the stock exchange here, and then you look at crypto, oops. When we had this 2007 run up into 20K, we also had a 2000, or 2017, excuse me, run up to 20K. This was also a blow off the top, high liquidity in all risk assets uh, across the board. Equities, so your stocks, real estate, all risk assets experienced the same kind of blow off the top move and then a pullback in 2018. So the pullback in, started in January in crypto, started right at the same time. So maybe they're not in lockstep in terms of correlation one-to-one, -one, uh, but Bitcoin is a higher beta asset, so it's more volatile. Uh, so the blow off the top here ended up being you know, a huge parabola here, and the pullback on the SPX obviously became you know, what we would call a bear market in crypto. Um, you know, Everything is hyperspeed in crypto, but to me, to say that there, these things are not correlated, I think is silly. When we saw the stock market bottom, Going into 2019, you saw crypto bottom. And then you saw essentially this last kind of blow off the top move uh, in equities before what we're now experiencing is the potential recession. Same thing here. We saw the run to 14K and now the pullback. So as much as it's not a one-to-one -one correlation, I think it's safe to say that the general direction of crypto has always been tied to the general correction or the general direction within the stock market, risk assets in general, and where liquidity is. And Bitcoin is just higher beta. It's more volatile. That's my take. Uh, you can disagree with me. doesn't really matter at the end of the day. That's just what I think. Um, so with that being said, if the stock market low is in, I think that's bullish for crypto. If the stock market low is not in, I don't think that's bullish for crypto. Um, you know, uh, I, I am a Bitcoin bull long term. I do want it to go up. So we'll just leave it at that. So we're within the range of this monthly candle, 6383 to 7727. So I would not be surprised if we saw more sideways price action within this range, but I think it's safe to say as long as we're within the bands of this candle here, um, I do not expect there to be a major trend. I think if we get through the bottom here, if we lose 6,400 essentially, because on the monthly time frame, right, 
You don't have to be as exact. You can just round this up to 6,400, right? Uh, I think we will see continuation of a downtrend. If we can get above 7,700, I do think that means we have a good shot of going, you know, kind of towards this high here and potentially beyond. And that would be quite bullish for crypto. Um, I'm not saying there's not tra trades in between, but if you're a super high time frame person and you just want to say, okay, how do I know when I think Bitcoin's going to break out towards 10K versus it's going to break out, potentially go retest the bottom? These are two good levels that you could mark on your chart uh, and and um, and kind of make your 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 bias based on that. If we're trading above here, you're bullish. If we're trading below here, you're bearish. Yes, that's a thousand dollar range, but we're talking about the monthly chart. We are testing an area of interest here uh, on the monthly chart as well. This kind of order block that's gone up. We've taken out, you know, this candle's high, this candle's high. We're back below. You could call that a breaker uh, and, you know, potentially sell off. This would be in line with a bullish theory here. If we're able to get through this gray block and get above 7,700, I think that would be uh, you know, the kind of market structure I would want to see for us to move towards 10k. Now, a wick through here and a close back below would be bearish, right? But we'll see a little bit more detail when I zoom in here. So I'm going to just delete all of those monthly levels. But remember what they are 7700 6400, because what you're going to see is I'm going to be able to refine those levels on the lower time frame. And you'll see that we're talking about the same kind of price points. Um, regardless. Uh, so if we're looking here now, on the weekly chart, we just had the weekly close. We've now had one, two, three, four, five green weekly candles in a row. Bitcoin does not have five green weekly candles in a row that often. One, two, three, four, right? Coming out of this bottom, we had one, two, three, four. Is that a green candle? Yes, but just barely five, six, seven. So, I mean, obviously a lot there. And then we had a huge trend. Uh, you know, going into all time high, one, two, three, four, five, and then a big dump. So five green weekly candles in a row is pretty rare. Are we going to make a sixth is the question. Um, and if, if I'm a betting man, I'm saying this week closes red. I'll explain why once we get on the little bit lower time frame, but I'm leaning towards this week closing red for Bitcoin. I'm not saying we're going to 3K again, but I do think we could see a pullback this week. This move is extended. We have a lot of long upper wicks, and we've also now closed a weekly swing high here. Um, so a swing high is defined by a three, I use a three candle swing high. Right, So there has to be the high candle and then there has to be a lower candle on each side of it for it to be considered a swing high. This would be considered a swing high potentially on the weekly. Doesn't mean that this candle cannot close through. It absolutely can. But generally what you see is right, there's your swing high candle, lower candle, lower candle. That's a swing high. Same thing here, right? There's your high, lower on each side. And what you want to see in that fourth candle is a willingness to move down to confirm that it is a swing high. It doesn't always work. Here's a perfect example of when it doesn't work. There's a swing high technically, but then this next candle moves up. So it's not a perfect science, right? But there's, it, there is there is a potential here that this is starting to round off. This move is steep. And as much as I want crypto to do this and I want the stock market to do this, I haven't really seen a lot of examples of markets just completely V bottoming like this. It, I could be wrong and I want to be wrong because I'm a Bitcoin bull at the end of the day. I'm just trying to be realistic. And when I don't have enough knowledge about, you know, whether, you know, if, if what was going on in the stock market wasn't happening right now, I'd be a lot more confident that the low is absolutely in. But I always want to be wary just based on the kind of global situation. So I would rather just play things level to level until we get some sort of, you know, more clarity. Um, so if we're looking at the weekly chart here, there's a few levels of interest to me. So one of them is, uh, is this level here. And this level here, right? So this is kind of a nice range that basically was the bottom for some time on Bitcoin. We came back above it, you know, didn't quite touch it, but support, support there. We're now back within this range. So similar to that monthly range that I showed you, um, you know, this could be a good barometer for whether we're going to start trending one way or another on Bitcoin. I'm of the mindset that, you know, there's nothing wrong uh, with this playing as a range back down to here and then potentially up and then maybe towards the latter half of the year we actually start trending the thing is that I think people don't 
want to believe perhaps is big trends happen after periods of consolidation. So notice how we consolidated here for months and then we had a ripper of a trend. The likelihood of us trending to all time high will be a lot higher if price action does this than it will be if we just do this, in my opinion. That's usually just how market works. Usually there's a trend, right? A strong volatile move in one direction, then a consolidation or a range and then a breakout. Um, so I think that is more likely for Bitcoin, sideways price action, up and down, uh, choppiness, and then some sort of break of the trend towards the latter half of 2020 going into 2021. I think that's a much more strong case from a price action perspective of starting a new bull run than a V bottom while half of the world or even more, it sounds like, are still locked in their homes and businesses are closed and uh, we don't know if the stock market has bottomed completely. Um, I don't know yet. Uh, again, I'm not trying to predict this. I would rather play this level to level. So if I'm a Bitcoin uh, you know, bull, that 7,700 level from the monthly, I mean, you essentially have the same level formed right here. So this is kind of the down candle that caused this last up move. Support there, we traded under, back above. It did not act as support on the way back down. So the logic, in my opinion, is, is if we can regain this level, similar to the 7,700 I showed you on the monthly, that would be quite bullish. And where's our 6,400 level, similar to the monthly, would be that swing low right there. Right, so this is essentially that same monthly range I just showed you, but now drilled down onto the weekly chart. So again, same idea here. I think if we can kind of regain, you know, this consolidation here, because the way that you know I trade is this consolidation should have been support here. Since it wasn't, when we're now coming and testing this consolidation on the underside, it could potentially be resistance. So it's an interesting area that we're coming into and the top of that consolidation is essentially this candle here. So we're coming into some resistance and now I'm gonna drill down again to the daily and obviously this trend is getting quite steep. I'm not much of a pattern trader, so forgive me for my trend lines here. Um, but you know, to me, we do have some sort of, you know, kind of wedge forming here. Depending on how you wanna draw your lines, this wedge has broken down and we're now retesting the underside. If that's the case, it looks very similar to this 10K top here, right? So we have our, you know, kind of our wedge up here, broke down, retested, gave us another bump and then it shit the bed, right? So we had kind of a lower high put in here Another lower high, right? Clearly lower low, lower low. This is a trend change on the daily. In my opinion, this is a lower low here that we've just made relative to this kind of cluster. It depends how you determine your lows. Do you use the wicks? Do you use the bodies of the candles? Uh, but what the bulls do not wanna see here is this round off. If this rounds off, this thing's gonna eat it. So if I'm just looking at this price action on the daily here, the two things that I kind of see, I see potential for one more move up towards this area here. So this is an untested area on the chart here. I could see one more move up towards kind of close to 8K. And lo and behold, you know, if you mark this candle, um, this candle's kind of body here. So I'll just mark the top and the bottom or the, the, the entire candle here. I could see a stab into this area to take out this high. Uh, and then a drop, or it's just gonna roll from here. Uh, I think if we are bullish, you know, we are gonna flip this area and absolutely you get omega bullish above these two levels in my opinion. If we can come up into here, form bullish price action, get a breakout, you could just long it. Um, but I think if we see a quick move up here early in the week, and then a, and then a, a, a move back below. So I'd wanna see a move up kinda like what we saw here, Right, but obviously this isn't quite dumping, but I actually ended up taking a short here last week and I ended up getting stopped out, but a move up, back below. So imagine that exact move, but happening up here. That would be a short I would look to take. So if we come up into this kind of 76 to 8K area, I will be looking to short. Uh, I'm not gonna short it right here. I would rather wait and see if we break down. So for now, Right, we could see another dip towards 6,600 here, take out all of these lows here into this order block here, and then dip one more leg up, and then I would look to short here. So that would be a long I would look for. If we pull back into this gray, 
I will look to long it. So this gray goes from about 6,600 to 6,900. Um, so I would be looking to long in the upper half of this area here. So like 6,700 area. Uh, so maybe running of the last couple of days lows and then one more push to the upside for the bulls. That's a long I would consider. If we start to round off here, I'm going to consider this just a deviation and I'm going to look to short any sort of move back below this gray targeting these lows right here. Okay, so that's the long, the, the long and short of it. I mean, in my opinion, this is running out of steam, right? These highs are getting marginally higher. The higher lows are getting marginally higher. And this looks like we're potentially forming a lower high now. So if you're a bull, um, you know, you want to see us get a little bit of a pullback and then you want to see a strong impulsive move because I don't think we're just going to grind up like this. If you look at the move to 14K, right? Anytime it started looking like a wedge, right? We got a strong impulsive move out of there. So we cannot go up like this forever. Usually what happens when you get this stair stepping up, the trend is losing steam. That's all a wedge shows you. The trend is losing steam. And usually you get the staircase up and the elevator down. So I don't want that to happen uh, necessarily. You know, I don't want this low to go, but I do think a more realistic bottom for Bitcoin is a kind of Wyckoff accumulation, right? So a move up, then a move down, put in a higher low, right? And then some sort of move out of there. Do we have to spring below this low? I don't know. Um, I'm not a Wyckoff expert by any means. Uh, so I'm not trying to, you know, make a prediction on exactly what's going to happen. But I think if we want to see this thing trend and go towards all time high, a way more realistic scenario is that we put in a high here somewhere and then we look to put in a higher low, um, you know, somewhere below 6K. Is the low end for sure? I don't know. Um, I'm leaning towards yes, uh, but uh, I still do think that we're due for a correction, right? Five green weekly candles in a row. Uh, I think I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, I'll show you the short I took here. So I took a short on uh, the running of this high here. Where are we here? No, I, I took a short here. We ran here, ran this high. I shorted in here, basically saying, okay, well, we're coming back up into, you know, a bearish order block here. We wicked into it, swing failure pattern. You know, that was a all day short. I'm going to take that every time. Um, I ended up moving my stop. I had my stop up here. So I don't think I would have been stopped out. Uh, originally, I had my stop at 74.35, I believe, 45. Uh, but I ended up moving it to here because it's what I want to see after this candle closes is I want to see expansion to the downside. When we just kind of held here and 7K get bought, kept getting bought up, I put my stop here on Friday and I just said, you know what, if, if it goes above this wick, I'm wrong. It obviously has gone above that wick. So, you know, I am obviously was, you know, kind of wrong on that one. So that's what I'm watching for here. Something similar. If we get back below here, you know, this kind of neckline, I think you could look to short it. But uh, to me, this price action looks like it's the bulls are running out of a little bit of steam here. Unless we can get an impulsive move um, above these highs here. So that daily area I was showing you, that's this kind of consolidation here. This is the next area I'd be looking to short. So I'm not shorting Bitcoin here. I'd rather short it closer to 8K or I'll short a breakdown. Uh, I think if you can get a move into this daily order block here, uh, I think that's a pretty low risk long for one more potential push up because even if it's only going to go to 8K, that's a 400 point move from 6,600. So that's kind of my thoughts. The weekly close I do think is potentially looking like it's a swing high on the weekly. So, um, you know, we did put in this high here. So what would be, you know, bearish potentially, right, is one more push up to take out last week's high. So there's last week's high right there. Maybe we take out the week before's high as well. Right. One more move up above here, confluent with this zone here and then a breakdown. I think that's your best RR short for a potential breakdown. Uh, the bull case, I guess you could say uh, high time frame. I mean, this still looks kind of steep, but as long as we're above this three day block, no reason that this can't make another push up. So, I mean, ideally, when you see a retest here, on an order block, forget what time frame it is. After this move comes down, I now want to see expansion. So the most bullish case I can make here on the three-day chart is that this is a three-day order block. We've made it. We're now retesting it. We've got some long lower wicks, and this next move is going to take us into the 8Ks. That would be kind of my hopium 
case. Uh, but more realistically, I think is a run above this high and then a breakdown. So thoughts on the weekly close is, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, if, if I'm making a guess, the trade I'm looking for is a move above this high into here to short. So I'm going to pass it over to Joe now. We'll take a look at his screen uh, and we will, uh, you know, see what his thoughts are on the weekly close. And then I can, you know, go over any other charts you guys might want to see. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So Joe, you still with me? Yeah, I know. I, I realized I just talked for like 20 minutes straight. Something I'm really, something I'm really good at. I don't know, nothing wrong. All right, so I'm going to join Joe's screen here, guys, and I'm going to change this to Discord podcast. All right, I'm just gonna make this full screen before I make this full screen guys let me know if you can see Joe's screen now what's the verdict Okay, cool. All right, Joe, you are uh, in full screen mode here. Giver, feel free to talk as long as you want. I took up half the time already. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm probably looking at the same levels, I think, um, in terms of the, the way that I, I figure out uh, price action. Um, and obviously, I, I still think that we've got quite a, a long um, time to to consolidate. As, as you can see, I mean, if I if I take this out, <clears throat> and this is how you kind of use the pill in the best way possible. Um, but basically, what you see is you see the, the pivots all kind of converging and squeezing. So it's almost like a body band. Um, and then obviously, once it, it breaks out, then it breaks out hard. Um, and I think that the the big issue is that everyone's expecting massive pump with the hardening. Um, obviously, like you say. Bitcoin is pretty co correlated with um, with uh, the normal markets. Um, but what's scary here is that like we're kind of just running out of volume. Um, and even though that sometimes is quite bullish, so you know the the price going lower with the volume going lower. Um, for me, this wave just wasn't um, big enough to see anything break out. So I'd I'd, I'd reckon that we're still going to be trending um, down. Um, and probably trading between this um, um, pivot and S1, um, unless we actually break, you know, above that pivot. I don't think that much is going to happen. I think we're going to go pretty much sideways. So how are those um, pivots calculated? Like what, what what are they representing for people who may not know? Okay, so um, there's a whole, it's, it's actually quite a, a big formula, but basically the, the whole thing behind the pivot is that it doesn't just take into consideration a close. So it's not a, a you know, you, you normally get your, like, your open and your close. Um, and here what it's doing is just waiting a lot more to the way that it's closing. Um, so it'll take the difference between um, the high and the low in the previous week or in on the weekly, obviously on the monthly. Um, and then it just gives a little bit more um, preference to, to the actual close. Um, so I've got a medium article I can pop it. I'll, I'll comment in your thing so that the guys can actually go take a look at all the all the technical um, calculations. But um, it's just like I said for for me um, as soon as the pivots you know kind of uh, the next one opens the same as the one before um, you kind of got a consolidation and like I said this is still squeezing. So I would imagine that we'd still um, trade quite a while. Um, definitely between R1 and S1. Yeah. Um, before there's any any change, um, which is quite scary because a lot of guys are obviously building positions, hoping that it's gonna, you know, 
take out the new highs. But um, yeah, I mean, I definitely imagine that it's still going to kind of go sideways for a bit. Yeah, I want the V bottom. I think anyone, why are you in crypto if you don't want Bitcoin to go through all time high? Um, so when I see these like perma bears who are like crypto is going to zero, I'm like, why are you here, bro? Like you'll always make more money longing Bitcoin, especially when you're longing it on exchanges like BitMEX that pay you in Bitcoin. You have to hold Bitcoin to trade there. Um, you know, you can only short something to zero, right? When the upside technically is infinite on longing. Um, and, you know, I'm in crypto because I think it's cool. I want Bitcoin to go up. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily in it for the tech. Um, but I do like, you know, the idea of, um, you know, decentralization and, uh, you know, kind of having control of your own money and your own wealth. And I love trading. But at the end of the day, we all assume in, assuming here own Bitcoin. Why wouldn't you want it to go up? But I do think in times like this, you have to be realistic um, and, and look at what the chart's telling you. And I mean, I haven't really seen many examples. If someone has some fractals or some previous market examples they want to share with us where market has started a new mega trend from a V bottom, I'd love to see it. Yeah, there's not a lot, there's not a lot that, that actually ever happens with a massive V bottom, except on really small time frames. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it takes kind of does time lose to consolidate. Quite quickly. Yeah, it takes time to consolidate. Yeah. And I mean, that kind of is in line with what I'm saying and what you're showing here. It's like, hey, it would actually be a good thing if Bitcoin goes sideways and builds a base and then, you know, then actually has a, you know, an opportunity to rally. And I mean, I'm not opposed to buying cheap Bitcoin. Exactly. Um, and also, I think you have to take a look at what's happening in the markets. I mean, with all the slowdown, and loads of industry closing, um especially from from markets around the world that um you know really matter to to infrastructure and i'm not, to, not talking about like if you take a look at the american market at the moment it's all tech um uh, and i think at the moment it's probably about like 80 percent um just like the big five tech companies um who will do well because they're all kind of decentralized right now so i mean you got your ubers you got your amazons you've got your uh, microsoft Google's, netflix microsoft well is that the stat you were quoting there about the 80 percent? i did read somewhere that uh you know this being yeah. this pump in the market <laughs> has essentially been attributed to like five stocks yeah exactly and i think like i said i mean the whole world kind of uses these apps um and i think that um if you if you take it into consideration um the, the way that it's being costed you'd probably see um so I mean, a V V bottom is something extreme happens and something extreme kind of combats it. So the market's obviously got a bit of confidence that it's going to keep on going. Um, but generally, you're always going to get a you know either like a W bottom, um, or we might even you know like test up and then actually just do like a whole you know U um, before we get anything really moving. So. Um, are are these pivots That's that you use? Are these pivots that you use just the standard um, ones on TradingView, yeah. or have you customized them at all? No, no, I just use the standard, the traditional one. Um, you can obviously change it. Um, I've tried a few, uh, but I feel just on on Bitcoin, especially Bitcoin, um, the traditional one probably works the best. And I mean, they've got Fibonacci and Woody, and um, the Fibonacci. If we can quickly change it, the Fibonacci actually, um, you, you can see that it, it worked out great there. It worked out great there. Here, it didn't really work out that well. Um, you would have probably supposed to have long there. You probably would have, would have gotten stopped out there. And if you waited for the new month to open, you would have been waiting forever to, to get in. So, so. The, so the pivots are obviously kind of like moving averages. Depending on what time frame you're on on your chart, they're showing up differently. Um, yeah. Do you use them like a moving average in terms of kind of like dynamic support and resistance? I guess it's not dynamic because they're not moving once the pivot is made. It's there. But is that how you use it? You're like, okay, we're approaching P here. Uh, I'm going to try and short it. So let's uh, go down to the one hour and I'll show you a little bit more how I use it. So um, obviously the, the big moves always kind of come uh, when they compress, right? Okay. So that's what you're looking for. You're really trying to, you're trying to get into a position when it's going to compress and then you've got to obviously just use some price action. Um, and then 
it doesn't always work out 100 percent same as a moving average um but i think what what happened um with with bitcoin here and i almost feel um i almost feel because these uh, in uh, in old school um, crypto trading these were these were actually called the gaps right so uh, what happened is that the market would move um, and in our case, I think the, the, the SPX actually moved down quite quickly here. And because we're a 24-hour market, you actually see this candle. Whereas I think on the, you know, on the American stocks, I don't think you actually have this candle going down. I think it's just like gaps down here. So this, this is a crypto gap, right? Um, and normally, I wouldn't really be taking trades in uh, when when you've got such a huge uh, range. From S1 to S2. So, I mean, currently that's like uh, a $10,000 $10, move, right? Um, so, I don't, I don't normally get into, into positions there, and I like to actually get into positions when it's squeezing. Um, and, and I'll be dead honest, I, I got in here. Um, I got in here um, looking to go long, hoping that we'd obviously have put in a higher high here. Um, and then hoping that this would hold as like a as a um, higher low. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, I mean, you know, I mean, I do I do use quite good risk management. So I mean, I did I did survive the entire thing where I saw a lot of guys losing their mind on on uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much how I do use them. And if you zoom in, you can kind of see that the when the pivots um, start opening higher each time, um, what you're expecting to happen the next day, and I think I did tweet about it. So you had, here was your one pivot, um, and then you had a higher pivot, and then you had another higher pivot. But at the end of this week, this price couldn't break above that pivot, and it would need to break this high in order to put in another um, higher, pivot. higher pivot. So these are awesome setups, um, and I should actually, because what had happened was um, I'd, I'd first gotten in here and um, I'd actually thought about getting out, but I'd, I'd, I'd you know, sometimes your bias just fucking fucks it. Blinds um, you, yeah. And, and I definitely felt like this was a, this was a good move. Um, and that's sometimes why I do take a look at volume, just to see if it was a real move or not. Um, but this was a great short setup. Um, so, As you can see. so can you, even though this is hindsight, I always find, you know, people hate on hindsight analysis a lot, but I think hindsight is a great way to learn uh, because as soon as you can start seeing it in the past, then when it's happening live, you can be like, oh, I've seen this setup before. I've seen this pattern before because these patterns in markets do tend to repeat the over unders, the head and shoulders. So if you can go back and price action, notice something. Then when it happens live, you're like, oh, I've seen this before. It's kind of ingrained. How, what's your trigger here? So, I mean, if you want to maybe go down and show us what would have the short setup been there? What triggered it for you? Where do you put your stop? Just kind of talk people through it. So the six hour, um, um, the six hour and the four hour also give this um, view quite nicely. So you actually see the pivots keep opening higher. Um, and then you see the pivots kind of do this uh, almost like a zigzag. So you've got one high, higher, and then the first one that comes in lower mm -hmm. um, is probably your first trigger that you should get in. And I mean, that would, that was pretty easy trade as well to get in because you had lower highs and you actually had um, uh, lower lows. So as price came obviously into test this pivot, it would have been in your, in your favor knowing that this one had opened lower, that the trend would have probably have changed already. And here you could have added, and here you could have added. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was on the wrong side. Of the um, and in hindsight, using price action, you can obviously um, see why your bias was actually wrong. Yeah. Um, I mean, from here, you should have already been out of the trade. Um, and I think that also comes down to some um, with your trailing stop losses. Um, you know, if, if you just stuck to the rule that that's the low, and uh, you kept your trailing stop loss um, somewhere up here, um, you would have actually been out of the trade, right? Um, and you, you would have probably gotten in with, with one of the moves here. Um, but the problem is, is uh, when, you, when you're using a trailing stop loss, you keep on moving this thing up. So you've already been chopped out once, yeah. and then price moves, and then your mind already starts thinking like, you know, I should probably have gotten back in. Um, 
I think that's one of the main the main uh, reasons why I like using the pivot because you can actually you can tell that the trend's definitely changed. So is um, it, it's pretty it, much it, the it's same. Interesting. Yeah. I've I've never used pivots before, but it does seem kind of cool in that it's almost like a Bollinger band. It's almost like a uh, a yeah. moving average in that it can tell you trend, uh, but it can also tell you when you're in a period of high volatility versus consolidation and when you may be, um, price may be constricting, kind of like in the Bollinger Bands, when it's getting tight, you're like, okay, a big move is coming. So it looks like yeah, exactly. on the six hour here, the pivots are starting to get quite close. Um, would that be yeah, this correct? Is, this is, yeah, this is generally, um, here it really it, it squeezed. Um, and this is where you should have seen the big move. So normally what happens is when you don't see the big move, you wait for this one to to open. So, I mean, going into this week, um, I was obviously looking for longs. Um, what's changed now, my bias is obviously that I believe we've got a lower low here. Um, I'm a lower high as well. Um, I think you mentioned that as well. Um, and obviously also what's changed my bias big time is that this pivot now, the new pivot, has opened lower than this one. Um, it doesn't always happen. Uh, like that. I mean, even the setup that it, that it looks at now, um, you could probably see um, us putting in another high. Um, and then this is where um, this is where I use the the pivot extensions, um, and I probably get the same levels um, as you. So basically, it's just the 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 one where the, the explosive move comes out is where yeah, you, it's right where, where my you border it. block is. It's funny how price at, and and th this is why when I first learned to trade, uh, I learned from uh, a guy named ICT, uh, who's uh, uh, maybe a little infamous on crypto Twitter. Um, but uh, one thing that he kind of preached that now that I've you know been doing this for six years that I kind of disagree with is he's like you know all indicators all that stuff is BS you know price action is all you need but then when I talk to more and more people who trade different ways you right now Captain Coley other people I kind of communicate with on Twitter it seems to me that you know my levels that I find through price action seem to line up with you know a key level on the Ichimoku cloud, a key level on uh, you know a pivot, and it's generally, in my opinion, because you know all of these things are calculations of price themselves. Uh, it's just a different way of visualizing it. So it's not surprising to me at all that we're getting you know basically bang on the exact same level here. Yeah, and I mean I think that the this lower level is also your your turning point level. Yeah. Uh, so six five, I think you're a little bit lower, um, and seven eight. So I'm a little bit higher. Um, but um, if you if you drill down into the, let's go into the six hour again. If you drill down into the six hour, you can see that we were supposed to get an explosive move, which we didn't. Um, and I mean, it becomes it becomes very apparent just using. I mean, we are we're definitely trending down, right? Um, I'm not saying that, that that you know we can't go absolutely crazy. I mean, there, there's a lo lot of who knows. Maybe a whole bunch of governments are trying to get Bitcoin so they can move money around. Well, the, there's the, so many. Things. Yeah, the market cap is still so small in Bitcoin. You know, you don't need a ton of money to move it around. So there is always that you know whale factor. Uh, I guess you could yeah. say where you know the market can literally be moved. Um, but you know, if you go to the, the weekly, for example, for a sec, and just maybe, can you, can you, uh, uh, turn off your drawings for a sec, just so it looks just like the chart. So if you look, if you just draw a line from, you know, that, that kind of, uh, November, 2020, November to the 2020 sign on the bottom thing there, if you just hold your crosshair up there, right? So, I mean, really what it looks like to me is it's like, we have a trend lower highs, lower lows, and you know, and we're now retesting kind of the underside of that consolidation that you just had marked. But that entire area of consolidation there, you know, that's that's potentially resistance. And in a downtrend, generally what you see uh, is, you know, the market moves down, it doesn't go in a straight line. There are pullbacks. So there are longing opportunities in a downtrend. Um, but to me, until we get above that consolidation and it looks like on your screen there, there's a nice pivot kind of going right through the middle there, you know, that would be a very key area for Bitcoin to clear, um, you know, if we wanted to get, you know, super bullish, uh, you know, kind of across the, the board on crypto. So let's, let's shift gears here a little bit. What are your thoughts on, I mean, do you trade stocks? Are you watching the SPX? Do you have any opinions there? 
don't trade too much SPX. I trade obviously a load of uh, local shares. Um, SPX is just really difficult, and um, especially with the tax and, and all of that type of thing. Um, and also then, you know, to actually trade them, it's probably easier just to trade through like a wonder commodities and that type of thing. Mm. Um, so from a tax point of view, it's just really difficult for, for us to get involved in um, the American. Um, but yeah, I mean, the local, the local markets uh, in South Africa are pretty much just as terrible. Um, and then they've all kind of made these semi V bottoms that we're all waiting for, you know, something to happen. So, so what's, um, your, and I think the, what's your currency there? Sorry to interrupt. Is it the Rand? Czar, yeah. Okay. So the USD czar, you want to pull up that chart? That's always a funny one. Uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is pretty brilliant. Yeah. If this pains you, just let me know. It's what people seem to not realize, right? Is, you know, all of this stuff we're looking at here are just fractions. So when you're looking at Bitcoin USD, you're looking at USD czar. Um, what is the thing in common? Bitcoin's going down. USD czar is going up. What's the common thing between those two pairs? It's the USD dollar part of the fraction and, uh, the DXY, the U.S. dollar has been on a bull run, uh, and that bull run on the U.S. dollar has been very much correlated with what's going on in other currencies. You see strength in the dollar index. You see weakness in pairs. So, I mean, when you look at the USD trend from 2018 to now, that's an uptrend. Um, and it's perfectly in line with Bitcoin being in a downtrend. It's perfectly in line with what he just showed, the USD czar. You know, the, the highs are getting blown out because it's showing weakness against the U.S. dollar. So as much as there's, um, you know, turmoil going on in the U.S. right now, it does seem like the U.S. dollar and U.S. assets are still, um, you know, kind of the, the, the place where money wants to be, right? Money has to flow out of somewhere into somewhere. And it still seems like money is generally flowing into the U.S. market. Yeah, I think at the moment, the whole world is probably looking at uh, the US dollar as, as its currency that it, that it needs to be getting its hands on, right? So um, even even South African guys that, that own huge amount of assets, they're probably a lot of those assets and, and buying dollars or buying American assets. So I think that's probably why you see it. But I mean, you've got a bit of a diamond, uh, a diamond consolidation going on here. Um, and I mean, it's very difficult to, to ever, you know, trade patterns. So a lot of guys, um, if, if you actually had to draw the, the thing out here, um, and guys actually, you know, do trade these, um, is that, let's just get it in here. Um, guys that did, that did kind of trade this, this, uh, diamond, uh, top, um, and what's difficult about a diamond is. And you can t and you can look it up. And most shapes are like this. Um, <laughs> is that you you get a diamond, and then you read up about it, and it's going to tell you that like diamond continuation pattern, right? And the difficult thing is that, and it's pretty much the same as Bitcoin as well. Every single time you see a, a diamond pattern, you see guys redrawing the diamond pattern because yeah, um, you know, like it's such an easy catch for for the guys that are moving stuff around, right? I mean, this is this Darth Maul candle just, I mean, it blew both sides out, right? So the guys that were looking to to short um, and said that this was like, you know, the top and guys that were trying to long um, by breaking out there. Um, I mean, Switch they're both like right? So yeah. I, I, that's why I like horizontal lines the most. Um, Big time. It, it, you, can't, you can't trade without price action. Yeah, it's, it's a little easier to uh, kind of fit uh, the trend lines to fit your bias, you can do that with horizontals. Um, not as easily, but you can always find a line and be like, oh, well, this line looks like support. Um, I think one of the things, you know, and, and it's nice, I think pivots are a good thing for this because it takes the guesswork out. You're not actually picking the candle that you draw the line from. You're like, this is an aggregate of, you know, this data. Um, whereas, uh, you know, I do think context is what's important. When people are trying to draw SR levels, they'll they'll draw them, they'll send them to me. They'll be like, well, why wasn't this support? To me, it's 
it's about context. Why is that level relevant? Well, what what did the level lead up to? Did it break a low? Did it break a high? Did it, you know, was this the base level before a major rally? Things like that. And that's how you're going to get good at drawing SR levels. You want levels that have, if you're drawing SR levels and every time price comes to your levels, there's no reaction. You're picking wrong the wrong levels. Uh, but I do feel like, you know, there's a little less kind of ability to, you know, mold the levels to your liking as there is with trend lines. I've seen people draw trend lines a thousand different ways. I'm not a trend line expert. I don't know the exact rules. Do you pick the wicks? Can it cut through the body? Can it cut through a wick? I don't fucking know. Uh, but I always, there are people on Twitter you see and it's like, didn't, wasn't that trend line a little bit higher last time and you've just moved it now because, you know, prices <laughs> dropped. Yeah. Also using a trend line to get in, into a trade, um, uh, is always, is always risky. Um, and I mean, I, I drawn this one on and the main reason why I actually draw this on, um, a lot of guys will think that I'm, I'm getting into trades, but it's not really, I mean, this is just shows me, uh, uh, normally I dim this out quite a bit, um, but I've got it a bit brighter just for the, for the show tonight. But I mean, the only reason why I draw this is I mean, you pretty much see that we topped out, um, here in June. And price has just been going downwards, right? So yeah. this kind of just sets my bias. I'm, I'm, I know that I shouldn't be looking for, for any lungs um, right now. Um, but you never know. Um, you know what, what has happened is we have broken, we have retested the, you know, um, and and last time we retested it, we actually had quite an explosive um, move. Um, now we've retested at a lower level, um, so there should actually be more, more demand down here. Um, so it's, it's very difficult at the moment, um, especially with all the, the FA that and you don't know what markets. And I think it's, as I, like you said, in, in, while you were going through it, just to play level to level, is probably going to be the easier. Yeah. Um, looking at your chart, I, mean, I would love a move up to that S1 pivot, um, to kind of run all the highs that we've just made in the last two weeks. Uh, and then, yeah. you know, right into that 7850 level, I think that would be a great good RR area for a short because your validation is super close. You put it right above the consolidation there uh, and you punt a short and you're either stopped out almost instantly and it, then you flip long because it's going to go up another thousand dollars or it's going to drop two thousand dollars. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I mean, well, it's nice um, when you when you go into the 15 minutes. Um, so anything up to 30, the pivots kind of remain the same. Um, so that's what, what's quite, quite nice on your charts. Um, but when you go down to a 15 minute, you can actually really um, start finding, you know, a place to, to get into into trades. So with that um, being said, do you execute on the low time frame or do you what, what's your kind of execution frame where you actually enter the trade and set your risk? So I, I execute on the 15 minute um, and that's just for a little bit more accuracy. Um, once you actually, you know, marked out all of your your um, levels like we have on the weekly um and the daily you you kind of got these um these pivots now that are extending through um and right now i mean getting into a trade doesn't really make much sense um you kind of you know midway between between the 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 two levels um so yeah i mean i would, I would probably i would probably imagine um that for the next couple of days you might still go a little bit sideways um but uh, if there is a sharp move up, I definitely think it's going to be something like that. Yeah, I, like that. I, I like that idea as well. Uh, one more kind of push to the upside. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to pull up my chart here for a sec. Uh, and I want to go through a couple of charts and then I want to pass it back to you and see these will be charts that you're maybe not looking at. And I want to see what your kind of pivots and stuff That's and cool. see because I think it's cool to see that we're coming up. Like I said, I kind of predicted I thought that might happen. Uh, is that we get very similar levels. Um, so what I'm going to do here is go to black screen for a sec. Go to here. All right. Just going to check the chat here. All right, guys. So I, I've just switched the chat, the, the video. It should come back to my screen in a second here. And I just want to see uh, if we get similar Half the comments here are like you forgot you have a you forgot you have a guest on. <laughs> Just going on my typical rants. Um, okay, so it's looking like the screen is black and it's looking like okay. So 
Um, yeah, very interesting to see how, you know, basically his pivot extension came bang in with that level I was talking about there. So I do think this is a pivotal area. Um, you know, I think looking at the H4, you know, there's obviously this is a key area in price action. And, uh, you know, if we see, um, you know, a move up into this consolidation here, I do think, you know, that will give a reaction because basically what you have here, how I trade is this is, you know, kind of a, uh, from here, this down up candle to here is a, a void. There's a gap here. There's just empty air. This all, all price did in this entire kind of squiggled out area is trade down. So generally price will fill in uh, those areas. And as you can see, it's filled in almost all of it except for right here. So this is the last area that had up price movement, right? Everything from here down is downward. So we filled in most of this. There's a little bit of a gap left up towards kind of 7,600, which is bang on with the level that Joe shared. So um, if anyone doesn't have any uh, crypto questions here, uh, I think let's, I'm going to take a look at oil. I'm going to draw up, uh, you know, some levels on oil here. I'll quickly look at Ethereum here. Um, Ethereum, I talked about this a couple videos ago. Ethereum was lagging behind Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin... What are we going to do? Ethereum uh, USD. Yeah, Ethereum USD. So I'll do Ethereum okay. USD and then I'll do oil. So why don't you get your charts ready? And then once I'm done, I'll pass it back over to you. Uh, and then I'll also do the SPX because a lot of people will probably want to see that. So I'll do Ethereum, the SPX, oil, and I'll pass it back to you and then we'll probably be good to wrap. Um, so if I look at the six hour chart on Ethereum, when we were back here, I talked about this in a video and I should have taken a long because I posted this chart in my Discord. And I talked about this in a video. I said Bitcoin is, is, is uh, leading the move. Bit Ethereum was lagging. Right. So Ethereum was forming this ascending kind of triangle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and Bitcoin had already done this breakout. So if I put them side to side, you'll see here a little more clearly. So here's the same area. So on April 3rd, where's Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin has broken out of this area already, right? Early April, Bitcoin's already breaking out to the upside. Ethereum was still in its kind of, you know, underside of this ascending wedge, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Bitcoin had already broken up. So Ethereum was the higher uh, RR play, right? There was going to be more uh, potential move for upside on Ethereum to catch up essentially to Bitcoin. Uh, and you can see it did that. It had two very nice impulse moves. And then same thing that we saw just recently here, um, you know, Bitcoin had traded up and made this high um, here and then taken that high out. Ethereum had made its high. Now it's taken that high out. So Ethereum's caught up quite a bit. Um, I do think very similar to Bitcoin, though, that Ethereum is probably going to come a little higher and then uh, you know potentially see some sort of retrace so what I'm doing right now I'm pulling a fib here um, this would be the yearly range on ethereum is what I'm showing you with this fib here guys so what's the low here Eighty five ninety. Oh, maybe not. Well, close enough. So Ethereum's basically traded right up into the mid range for the year. So um, I would like to see Ethereum trade a little higher, just like Bitcoin. I'm gonna turn off the double screen here now. Uh, I, I would like to see Ethereum trade a little bit higher. It could turn around from here, right? So we are into a bearish order block. We are at the yearly mid range. Um, what I would like to see on Ethereum though is one more push up towards 200 into this area and into an area where I think it would be extended. I think if we start getting into the 62 to 79% retracement area, um, you know, that's your high value area for a short. Um, this is the same thing for um, any uh, stock or chart or whatever. When price moves, 
in any, either direction, these waves, right, these price ranges, these legs it makes, oftentimes they like to pull back between the 61.8 and the 78.6. Go pull them on your chart. You'll see it happen all the fucking time. Uh, and this is an area where I think it would be overextended. So I would love to see uh, Ethereum peak over 200 uh, and then give us an opportunity to short. And I think that's very much in line, uh, you know, with what we were just covering on Bitcoin. You know, here's the high of 2020. You know, here's the low. Bitcoin is trading above its mid range. But again, there's that same consolidation I've been talking about. Remember that monthly level 7700. That's right in here. So I'll move up into the 62 area. This is kind of your highest risk reward area for a short. Um, so same goes for Ethereum here. So I think a little bit higher is possible on Ethereum. One more push up and I do think it's still lagging Bitcoin. So this continuing to have one more push up would be the catalyst that could potentially bring Bitcoin up a little higher as well. Um, so if you want to test that Fibonacci thing, go on any one of your charts uh, and like perhaps, you know, Bitcoin, the easiest one to see, right, is all of these pullbacks that happen in the bear market here, right? Go look at crypto Twitter in July of 2018. Because what happens is we get to the 50% and I find this always lines up with sentiment. Here I go on another rant, not even talking about what I said I was gonna talk about, but regardless. Um, what I find happens is it works very well with sentiment. So you take the high to the low, once we get to the 50%, right? Everyone's bearish, oh, Bitcoin looks like shit. We get to the 50%, all of a sudden, people start getting bullish. We're going to 10K. It goes a little bit higher, gets into that kind of sweet spot that ICT calls it uh, between these three fibs here, uh, and then it dumps, right? Same shit happens every fucking time. Here it is again, right? Take it from the high to the low. Go look at crypto Twitter in May of 2018. We're at 9K. Everyone's starting to get bullish. We just took out this high. Everyone's getting bullish. Goes a little bit higher, and then it dumps. Um, so this is a very common and this works in uh, it works in the reverse as well, right? On the buying side, the low to the high, this came a little bit deeper, right? But came into the 79% rate level and then moved. I'm obviously showing a buying opportunity is work. It looked better here. Right? right into that sweet spot. So I'm taking a low to a high, right into the sweet spot, then it goes. Um, so it's this is a great way. This is not enough to enter a trade. You can't just pull a fib and be like, it's at the 62. But if you say, okay, well, it's at the 62 and we're in an uptrend because we just broke you know, a swing high uh, you know, and we're trending up and we're also testing a previous top, SR plus the fib, plus the trend, plus whatever else you might have. Now you have confluence. Whenever I wanna enter a trade, I wanna have two or three pieces of confluence for my reasoning to enter the trade. So the FIB might be one of them, right? So I might say, okay, well, we're in the sweet spot. We've also taken out a previous week's high or a low, right? So maybe this is your sweet spot here, your 79 or whatever. We've taken out a previous week's low on the move. We've retested a key level of support. There's an order block here. Now I have two or three pieces of confluence that make me want to enter that trade. So that's another tool you can add to your tool belt. All I use the FIB for, it's not like some magic numbers like some people use them for. I've seen some people do some crazy stuff with FIB. I just use it as a measurement tool. Think of it as like a ruler and I'm just measuring ranges. So generally price moves in ranges and when it decides to turn around, if I want to sell it, I want to sell it when it's overextended to the upside. And that's all that this is showing. This is overextension to the upside. If I'm bearish, if I'm bullish, I want to buy it when there's an overextension to the downside, which would be beyond 50%. So uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin both kind of line up with that potentially move a little higher. I'll talk about the SPX here quickly, and then I'll talk about oil and I'll pass it back to Joe. Um, so. One thing I am looking at when I look at the S&P, let me go to my end of the world list here. Um, so, I mean, obviously this thing is, you know, been going up like crazy forever. Um, one thing you want to be aware of, and I know some people are like, I don't like comparing this to 1929 because that was a hundred years ago. I still think that's relevant because price patterns in markets repeat. 
Um, so, you know, I do think there is something of note here where we made the top, we retraced essentially 50% of the dump. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, obviously this is a long time ago, things are different, but then we, you know, continued down significantly. Uh, and again, you want to see a major bull run happen. It doesn't happen after this. It happens after a huge period of consolidation. In this case, you know, the uh, basically spanning, you know, 20 years in a world war. Um, so, you know, huge period of consolidation, then a mega trend. So if you're looking at the market now, you know, I think it's silly to completely ignore the fact that, you know, it's very similar uh, in terms of just kind of structure. We've had a major dump and then we've pulled back and kind of erased essentially now more than 50% of the dump. So using that fib thing that I just talked to you about, you know, an area that I'm looking for a potential reversal on the stock exchange would be within this kind of sweet spot because if this is going to continue down, if it's going to continue down, the highest probability area to short it is in this area here, because if it gets above this area here, there's a good chance we are going to continue up. I mean, I believe now, I don't believe, I can tell you because I'm looking at the numbers, we're closer to all-time high than we are to the low we just made. Um, just thinking logically about this, um, if people are locked in their houses, can't go to work, the economy is shut down in a lot of ways, tons of businesses are going under, what is the likelihood that that this is it? We've experienced the worst of it and it's all good. We're just going to start trending towards all time high here. Um, I'm not saying we're going to do this and go down another 80% or 50%, but I would not be surprised if we see a pullback and then sideways. You know, I think that's much more realistic. But again, I'm not trying to predict, uh, but I do think the SPX is getting into an area of interest. I think everyone has been shorting. As usual, right, everyone has been shorting this entire move. All of crypto Twitter who decided they were equities experts after this low happened have been shorting this entire fucking move up and are just eating it. The game is rigged uh, against you in a sense. So even though this might continue down, it's going to continue down after you're running out of money uh, to short it anymore. So I do think we're getting to an area of interest. Personally, if I was going to take some shorts on the SPX, like some options or something like that or... Uh, I would be looking to do so 2,900 to 3,000, kind of mid 3,000 into this consolidation, right? So it's not just the FIB on its own, right? It's also there's a key consolidation here because once we broke this consolidation to the downside, right, we had a huge drop. So this is a key area that could potentially act as resistance on the way down or on the way back up, excuse me. So SPX, I think, has a little bit more juice, can go a little higher, but to me, this looks like, you know, the perfect trap. It looks like, yes, everyone, the bottom is in. Don't worry, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. The bottom is in. This was the quickest recession ever, even though people aren't allowed out of their houses, and then a big fucking dump again. And unfortunately, in my opinion, if this happens on the SPX, I think something similar happens on Bitcoin. I want to be wrong, but that's just my thoughts. Oil, uh, this one hurts me to look at because, you know, I am Canadian. Uh, and our economy is extremely heavily, uh, you know, kind of tied to oil. Um, but, you know, oil looks like, you know, fucking absolute death. I mean, the fact that I can buy a barrel of oil for $15, which is like the cost of like an extra large bucket of chicken at KFC is mental. Um, you know, if I was looking to get in oil, I would want to on the long side. I'm not looking to short this, right? Like if you're looking at this chart, it looks like an altcoin, first of all, uh, but you're not shorting this thing after it's 90% down, right? You're looking to either, you're looking to long it once it regains some sort of significant price floor. So to me, I think that $25 level, so what would this be? This would be the 2016 low, 2608 would be an interesting area. Um, you know, and... You could say uh, up into here as well. What would this be? The 20, 2009 low. So, you know, I'm not interested in oil. I, I would treat this like an altcoin. Uh, I'm not touching it. I wouldn't short it. We've gone down so much. Look at this move. This is like, you know, when price is screaming down like this, you miss the short, bro. Right? Don't short it now. 
uh, you're better off waiting for price to show some sort of structure. So you don't want to enter in on these these moves, uh, in my opinion. The, the only time to enter in a red candle like this is actually a buy, not a lot, not a short. But I'm not trying to step in front of this train. Uh, to me, I think this is a very clear level. You have the 2016 low. Um, this is a com very inefficient move here. <clears throat> So you have you know 30% between these two levels, and to me this is just air. Uh, so yes, you might not catch the bottom on oil, right? You're gonna miss, you're gonna miss the bottom, but you need to see some sort of structure before you get in, in my opinion. And I think a reclaim of the 2016 low uh, is uh, a potential area of interest where I would say, okay, I want to long it up towards 30. Uh, you know, this is looking like maybe we're getting some sort of triple stop here. So maybe we get one more stab to the downside. If you really want to get in early, you could start looking at this on a lower time frame. Basically, I would just call it 20. It's 1930 there. I would just say 20 bucks here. We can regain this floor. This is how I traded altcoins the entire downtrend is I waited and if it regained a floor, I would long it. So if I'm just looking at this like an altcoin, back above here, your risk is there. You target this level here. Um, you know, and then that, t and then this is essentially that 2016 low. Funny enough, right? How that order block forms right at the 2016 low above there. You know, you're targeting up here now. So I wouldn't touch oil yet. I think it can drop a little further. Maybe give us one more stab to the downside. I would like to think it's bottoming soon, uh, but you need to see some sort of price action. I need to see some sort of bullishness. So what does bullishness look like? I just explained it to you, right? I want to see us reclaim a low. Uh, so if you're looking low time frame, you want to get in an oil long, get back above there, then let's talk. All right, so I'm going to, he, someone said there's clean lows at $10.50. Oh my God, uh, from where, bro? Down here? Yeah, Jesus. I mean, fuck, yeah, it can go much lower, right? So it can go much lower. So no, no point trying to catch the knife right now, in my opinion. But I think uh, if you're looking for a level for me to get long, uh, I think a no brainer. If we, you know, regardless of what we do, if we reclaim 20, I think you just punt along, put your stop at the low that caused us to break that level uh, and go from there. So I'm going to pass this back to Joe. Let's see what he has to say. So FUSD, uh, the SPX and then oil. So, so give me one, pretty much give me out one sec it. here, brother. I got to switch the, the screen over to you. Oh, uh, nice choice. I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do this, but I'm amazed that two, two boomers have made it work this well so far. All right, podcast. I think if, if anybody's got a suggestion which program or whatever we should use. Like, yeah, if there's a more smooth way to do <laughs> sure, this, please man. let us know. What's up, Jack P? All right, it should be switching over to your screen now. Watch the love, yeah. Just let me know when I'm when I'm up because I've obviously gone watch your YouTube. Yeah, it's just I I've got the YouTube up on my phone, so I'm just watching for it. To, looks like it's uh it's a little bit behind, but should be going in a few seconds here. Starting to get hot. It's going into winter there in, in South Africa. Yeah, we're going into winter. So I think that's why um, I don't think that we've seen the end of our, what's, our lockdown. To what's be the temperature honest. like in the winter there? Um, so winter, winter, you'll go anything from like minus two. Uh, okay, in centigrade though. I so use centigrade too. Know. I'm part of the, the cultured world. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. So we, we go from minus two to about the highs of like between 12 and 15. Okay, that's awesome. um, so that's when so it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people get sick. So yeah, well, no, that's what they're saying. There might be a second spike in the winter months. All right, your screen is live. All right, cool. Um, so Ethereum, I think you were saying that you too much. Um, and it's probably because of this type of action here. Yeah. Um, 197 ish. Um, all right, so mine's almost the same. Um, I think that we might actually see a little bit higher. 
Um, we've had 38 days of, you know, um, higher highs and um, higher lows. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this starts consolidating just a little bit and then pops up. Um, but I think that ultimately it will will follow Bitcoin. Um, and like I say, sometimes it over exaggerates. So I would imagine if Bitcoin does do that last little pop, Ethereum will probably be pop up into this to this area. Um, and the way that I frame um, that I frame that trade, uh, I get I just draw the extensions from the pivots. So I've got the the newest pivot, um, which is my bottom support, and then the pivot just before things changed up. Um, so you had, you know, uh, you kind of had a higher high and you probably expected some something here to stick. Um, you know, volume was picking up nicely. Um, and then obviously just shut the bed um, and followed Bitcoin. So I, I think, um, I kind of think that we definitely will see that that um, spike up. Um, so basically I just draw the, the one from uh, the daily across and then I draw same one from the same place where we broke down um being the high and then the latest six uh six hour pivot which is there so um and normally what happens is i mean price drawn to the pivot so you can always see um no matter where the pivot opens price definitely comes um and interacts with it um which is pretty cool um you you kind of if even if you've you've gone the wrong way um you kind of always seem to to have a, a chance uh, to get out with um, not as massive losses. Um, if you just follow the rule that it is going to be drawn towards that pivot. So I would imagine that we, we kind of pull back here and then this um, kind of acts as uh, an SR flip. And then I think that we're going to kind of move into there. Um, and then I think it all just depends on, on what happens in the market. Um, I don't think that uh, Ethereum has got any big news coming up um but the b big problem with ethereum is obviously all the all the um the hacks i think there was quite a massive hack today as well um, yeah i i don't pay too much attention to that stuff but yeah it definitely doesn't uh yeah. it doesn't help well, it, it, exactly yeah it's a bit scary you know like everyone's going um and i think that's one of the biggest problems like with with bitcoin a lot of guys can you know pretty sh be sure about um, you know what's getting built on it. And with Ethereum, I mean, all you hear is this, uh, DeFi, 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 DeFi. You know, and <laughs> I don't know. Every single time that I, I kind of start looking at what DeFi is, um, you know, everything that just comes up is just hacks. You know, I don't really, I don't really like holding any. Um, I do like trading and using it as a hedge, and that's probably about it. Um. Okay, what's next? SPX. So, what's your level there? Sorry, two. You think it goes oh, a little higher? So, I'm 20? going. Yeah, two sixteen between two sixteen and two twenty eight. I definitely think that you know it'll get in there. Um, it might top out here at one one ninety eight thirty eight. So, um, R one is obviously sitting at one hundred and ninety eight dollars. Okay. Uh, R two extension is the one you're looking at there. Yeah, R2 extension, um, and generally price has um, kind of uh, reached up to R2. Here we kind of are cooling off a little bit, um, so we might just see somewhere up over there. Um, like I say, I wouldn't be looking at getting in, in, into any short um, with Ethereum. Uh, Bitcoin are definitely short. Yeah, I, I don't love trading uh, Ethereum as much as I like trading Bitcoin. I, I, my hit rate on trading Ethereum, especially on Bitmax, where you just get, you know, kind of screwed with the Quanto, um, is just bad. Uh, so I, I'd much rather trade Bitcoin. I mean, I know Ethereum is more beta, right? So you get higher percentage moves. Bitcoin's up two percent. You'll see Ethereum up, you know, kind of four percent. Uh, so it's you know, there's there's an advantage, there's a disadvantage. I don't know if anyone has experience trading it on other. Uh, exchanges like Bybit or something, maybe let me know. The most time that I trade Ethereum is just spot. Honestly, I'll you know could occasionally buy and sell spot. I did a really good buy uh, before this kind of last run up towards 300, uh, and you know almost doubled my money, but it was you know no leverage at all. So uh, I just find it's not really a great uh, instrument to trade on Max. 
I'll, I'll definitely look at getting into a long. Um, yeah. Um, if 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 we do see a, a pullback into here, um, and and this level holds, you know, because what I what I do like about this is the all the pivots are opening higher, um, and now you have got this kind of um, it kind of almost alerts you that look, guys, there is going to be a little bit of consolidation here because all of a sudden the range really, you know, picks up quite quite a lot. Um, so it definitely have to re refuel before it kind of goes um, higher again. Um, so I mean, this would be a pretty pretty decent uh, along with your stop, you know, just under S one. So how do you define like a level holding? Like, what's that mean to you? Is it a candle close above? Um, pretty much the same as you. Uh, I think that I definitely look for um, for those three candles um, and actually try find try find um, a move. Um, you know, like over here, where you've got you know one coming down, then you're making a lower. A lower low, and then all of a sudden you, you you're breaking all the way through. I mean that 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 could have been quite a nice uh, entry if you're sculpting. Um, it probably looks huge, like on the one hour. Uh, yeah, and that was quite a big move. Um, let's just see how big that move really was. Uh, that was a twelve percent move. Yeah, that was a huge move. Um. But yeah, what, I, what I'm looking for, um, price to hold is obviously a couple of, um, and then I definitely, um, I, I, I definitely, just, you know, use price action as as normal. So I mean, well, what I was looking for here, um, if I had got try to get into a trade um, on Ethereum, would probably just be, um, you know, uh, coming into the the actual zone um, over here. Um, you know, trying to find something that does kind of reverse. So this is on the hourly. Um, in 15 minutes, you'd probably find really nice, yeah. Um, so, actually, you know, it's it's really difficult for me to even say how I would have gotten into a trade. And that's why, like, I probably don't like it because I just never, ever, <laughs> I never actually get into a trade. Yeah, I'm I'm like of the mindset unless the screen is a setup is like screaming at you, you shouldn't take it. Like unless it's super obvious, yeah. like okay, here's where I'm wrong, here's where I'm right. Um, the, this will this for me will definitely, uh, you know, if if you see something like that where it breaks through the pivot and then retest the pivot. Yeah. Um, especially with this um Previous this over top here was. Yeah. Um, so I mean that that definitely is screaming at me. I mean I'd like to see it break through and then kind of test and i'll definitely take along um because that that definitely looks worth it Joe. and then i think that's that would line a... up with bitcoin nicely kind of retesting <laughs> six six to six seven and then seeing another move yeah um so yeah that's ethereum okay so let's see what are your thoughts on just kind of the this spx right now okay so i did mark them up i don't know which oil chart you so i used a wti crude it's just the one that's available on oanda yeah, okay, perfect. That's one that I tried. Um, okay, so SPX, um, same thing. Uh, if I go into the daily, um, before the big move, I've just extended that pivot and then the current pivot. Um, so I've got the range that I imagine um, price would be be trading in. Um, and then I just go down to like the six hour. And same thing. I, I choose the pivot just before the move down and I choose the, the newest open. So I mean, these are my highs and these are my lows. Um, also, same thing. I mean, this market is, at the moment, I don't actually know how anybody can be trading this, um, to be dead honest. Um, I mean, because you don't normally see huge moves followed by just like, you know, full retraces all the way back um, without a whole bunch of money propping up the market. And I mean, what, basically what that means is not at a market price, right? It's just, in, well, that, it's, that's exactly it's what's inflated. happening, isn't it? Right? Like the fed is just pumping this thing, um, by printing money. And, um, you know, I do think that this is a dead cap bounce. My one concern and why I think it might go higher, um, is, you know, into those levels that you marked, which are similar to the ones I showed at the 62 to kind of 79% retracement of the dump, um, is simply because people are still trying to short the fuck out of this thing. 
right? And the market will, in my opinion, you know, this will continue to go up as long as I, I think I saw a tweet today. Uh, someone tweeted an article where it said interest for shorting the equities market is at an all time high going into this week. Right. And it's like, well, what the fuck? I mean, to me, that just means like, I think we're going to push higher then. Uh, right. Like, is it rocket fuel for the dump or is that, uh, you know, reason to believe that this just goes higher um, because people are still trying to short the market? Yes, that, that's the thing. And, and like I say, just the just the fact that it's not actually the market value that's actually there and it's just inflated stocks. Yeah, um, it doesn't take much for um, people to start realizing that what they're buying isn't at that value. Well, um, and I think that's what's really difficult for people to to come. You know, that's why I think that there's so many people wanting to short it. Yeah, look at Tesla. Pull up the Tesla stock. Tesla looks nuts. Now, like, <laughs> like what the hell is that, right? So basically, yeah, you see, it went to like a thousand, uh, and then it went all the way down to like three hundred, and now it's like retracing. To me, this kind of looks like like the dead cat bounce on Bitcoin at 17K. Yeah, look, also um, these tech stocks at the moment are also something, um, you know, like I say, I mean, I don't know. I kind of always have this view that every hundred years, everything gets reset. Um, and I don't think that the markets are dead. I just think that um, the way that we're going to get out of this um, is going to change everybody's life in a different way, but in a, in a completely... Um, roundabout way that no one really saw coming. And I just think that maybe that's why these tech stocks are all, because I mean, Tesla isn't really a car. It's a, it's a tech stock. That's what people are. Um, and I think that the big problem is, is that, you know, these types of, of assets um, are huge assets for the US. Um, and, you know, with what's happening at the moment, um, you never know. Tesla could all of a sudden start going through Europe, start going through Africa, start going through Australia. Um, and there's a whole bunch of guys that just know know about this move, right? Um, I yeah, don't know. I, I think that's an interesting take, um, you know, that uh, things get reset, you know, every hundred years. I, I am in agreement. Like, it's weird. I was so I was at the park, you know, with, with my girlfriend and two friends yesterday, and we were social distancing, right? We were setting six you know feet apart two meters whatever it is um but we're having some beers and it's like you know after a few drinks it's like your natural reaction is to want to <laughs> you know interact with people and i wonder how um you know our society is going to i don't know if we'll go back to the normal that we had before uh it's it, which is kind of you know exciting and scary at the same time um so, you know, like you're saying, you know, how are we going to come out of this? What is the world going to look like on the other side? It's like, I don't know, like are social gatherings ever going to be the same as, you know, they were before after this? Is everyone going to be scared to, uh, you know, like interact with each other? Like, I feel like humans are social creatures, but technology has kind of, you know, divided us a little bit and made it less so. And now with this and, and now we're being forced to be remote and forced to interact with people digitally. I mean, I've got friends, you know, I'm FaceTiming and Zoom calling them all the time. And it's weird, you know, not seeing them in person. But I was like, is that the new normal? Like, you know, what does the world look like, you know, a year from now, once all of this is, you know, kind of settled or two years from now? I don't really know. Are we going to see big, massive events with thousands of people still? Yeah, I, I don't think that it'll happen for quite a quite a long time. I think that, that um, even if even if markets kind of reopen, I think it'll be under a lot of um, a lot of guidance or a lot of restriction. Um, and like I say, I mean, you guys can still drink. I saw that the guys in the UK can actually order order takeaway uh, drinks or delivery drinks. Um, they've they've really stopped that out for us. We can't buy alcohol. That's crazy. Um, like this stuff, there's still a surprising amount of stuff open here. Like we have a ton of parks where I live. It's like a very, you know, a lot of nature, um, you know, and they've yeah. closed a lot of stuff to the public, which basically means you can't drive there anymore, but people are still going. Um, you know, the, the government liquor stores are closed, but a lot of private businesses, they're still open. There's a little sushi place by my house. They, they're not closed. It's takeaway only, but you can still walk in there and order sushi. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe we're lagging behind. Um, I do think this in advance, Canada is not super population dense, uh, you know, for how big of a country it is. There's only 35 million people here. 
um, you know, which is the same amount of people that are in California. Uh, so, you know, maybe it's a good thing, but uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, I feel for you. If it's that, if that locked down over there, like you're getting tickets and stuff for being outside, it's like, that's crazy. I don't like it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, um, it almost kind of um, forces you to actually, in the, you know, in the beginning, you kind of, you've got hope that they're going to reopen. When they extended it, it actually really forces you to sit down. And, Bro, shit's going to change, man. Yeah. Like no one's going to be going to a restaurant or a grave or a club. Like people are going to be doing that from, from their homes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with all the, I, I just kind of, it, it kind of all, almost all comes together and starts making sense. I mean, you could, we could all be watching Netflix at the same time as if we were sitting in a movie theater. Um, but they could change it around with, I mean, you know, like the, um, the opening of like a cannabis market worldwide, you know, yeah. where they could really, really like, I mean, they could make a movie completely based on, you know, what people are smoking, um, which is scary to think, but I mean, it could, it could happen, right? Um, I'm, same with, I'm very same conservative with, um, in that I, I like small government. I don't like big government. I think the handling of this coronavirus situation just shows you how shitty the government is at doing anything. So when people are like, oh, I want to vote liberal and, you know, socialist on these issues, it's like, why would you want the government to be responsible for more of your life? You know, like this is one of the few instances where we need the government to step in and do shit. And it's been, you know, a shit show in a lot of ways. Uh, it's like, why would you want them? Inv I want the government to have as little to do with my life as possible. And I do feel like the world is trending the opposite direction right now, which I do not like. Yeah. It's become, it's, it, it actually makes you really think about like, um, your rights are your rights, but then all of a sudden it's so easy for a, a, a country just to declare an, uh, an emergency. Yeah. Rights are gone. You know, it's like, uh, okay. So, I mean, and this is. I mean, the next big thing that, that comes past, I mean, you know, we've got to kind of brace ourselves. Like, it looks like every time it's going to happen, some of our, our rights are going to get taken away. Well, it's interesting in Sweden, so it I believe it's Sweden, I read an article and they're basically saying, we are going to quarantine old people and high risk people, people with like immune deficiencies uh, and let everyone else get it, essentially. Um, yeah. And apparently it's working. I don't know. I mean, it seems crazy and people were like giving them so much shit. But I mean, some of the stats I'm reading are like people who are dying from coronavirus are, you know, had a high likelihood of dying within like the next couple of years anyways, just based on, you know, their age or whatever. So um, not to make this, you know, a, a coronavirus tinfoil hat chat, but, uh, you know, I do think it's a very weird time. And, you know, for people who are maybe watching this stream, I mean, a great opportunity to, you know, learn new skills. Um, you know, if you've never, if you've always been worried about like having the time to like really get in dug, stuck into trading, uh, you know, now is the time I'm not old enough that I was financially literate or able to trade during the 2008 recession. So I really want to do well because, you know, in times of chaos and stuff like this, this is when the best opportunities come. So, you know, you can look at it as yeah. doom and gloom, like the world is ending, but you can also say, listen, you're going to get some generational uh, wealth making opportunities here in crypto, in the stock market, uh, where you're going to be buying stuff for pennies on the dollar, you know, God forbid that the, the market ass falls out. But if you're able to buy Bitcoin for 2000 bucks a pop, and you're able to buy, you know, Tesla and Amazon and Microsoft 40 50% off the high, uh, you know, that can really, uh, you know, set you up. Uh, so definitely a good time to be paying attention, uh, you know, at the very least to the markets and, you know, sharpening your tools right now. I also think you're just paying attention to, um, what type of money flows are happening, um, internationally. Um, I think that that's massive at the moment. So, um, and, and just reading the news. So like, I mean, I heard that in, aren't getting seed, um, or a lot of different, uh, agriculture. Um, and then it's because Belgium and, and Holland, who are like the biggest seed exporters in the world, um, are closed for business, right? Um, so there are going to be, um, you know, deals made between countries now where all of a sudden that, that side will open, you know, so just, you know, read a lot of the news, um, even though half of it's bullshit. Yeah. Um, well, that's the you know, hardest part for me. Is focus on things that are really happening. 
the thing I like about trading, I'm more of like an analytical person. Like I love math because there's no, I hated English in school because it's so subjective, right? Yeah. I love math because it's like, there's one way to do this and there's a right answer and then there's a wrong answer. There was no in between. And that always kind of worked with my brain. Same with trading. I mean, in trading, there's a lot of ways to look at the market, but the system I've created is if it goes below here, I'm wrong. Uh, you know, if this happens, there's a good chance I'm right. Um, and the problem yeah. with the news, right, and how it works in my mind is I have a hard time doing it because there's so much bullshit out there. Like you said, you don't know what's real. You don't know what it, you know, it, it is fake news. You don't know what's, you know, bullshit. Um, and I can't stand it because I'll read conflicting articles all the time. Someone in the chat right now is telling me um, that, uh, you know, it's not working in Sweden. So I read an article said it is working. So he's saying it's not yeah. working. So it's like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to know what's right? Um, you know, so also, it, it's I frustrating. Think that that's, I think that's the biggest thing right now. And that's politics have basically the, the mainstream media, right? So, and there's a whole bunch of guys. And I mean, like, it's not that I, that I hate Trump or that I like him. Um, it's just hilarious watching everybody swing every single day with whatever he's got to say. Um, and, and guys will actually, who were, you know, kind of going against what he was saying three weeks ago and not having to turn around and go like, oh, what he actually was trying to do was pretty good. And all of us just bitched because he was the one that was doing it. Right. So I don't know. I mean, I, uh... I find it, people, I think, find it very difficult to separate the policies um, from the person. And it's like at the end of the day, like I think, you know, Trump as a person, like, yeah, he, he lies. Um, you know, he's a jackass. Um, he's not very presidential. Um, but, you know, you have to try and look at things objectively in that sense. And when he does good things, you got to be like, hey, it's a good thing. And you can't just hate it because, you know, like you said, just because Trump said it. So I'm in Canada. You know, we have a very likable prime minister. He got away with doing blackface like three times because he's so likable. Still won re-election. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I can't really relate, I guess. But who fucking knows? So, yeah, here now we got a guy who said he's in Sweden and it is working. So how do we know it's true, Joe? How do we fucking know? Well, that's the thing. And I mean, I, I've, I've actually, you, you know, you actually start kind of speaking to people on Twitter because um, you get really bored being at home all day. Um, and I've actually started interacting a lot more with the people commenting um, on anything. Um, and I just kind of ask them where they're from and, and then, you know, find out from, <laughs> from them what's going on. And I mean, geez, bro, some, some guys have been locked down for like a few weeks. Um, I mean, I do think Twitter is one of the most important apps, um, you know, of our time yeah. right? because it gives you the ability to talk with people from all over the world. It's relatively unfiltered. Um, you know, there's not really uh, rules in place. I mean, obviously, you can't, you know, go doing hate speech and saying, you know, super derogatory things. But, um, you know, you can get a lot of opinions. And I think it's super important. Twitter's a stock I'm super long term bullish on. Yeah, definitely. And I think... Um... Uh, his affiliation with Bitcoin is just going to make that space really, really. Okay, so let's see your thoughts <clears throat> on oil and then maybe we'll wrap it up. It's been over like an hour and a half at this point. So I'm sure people are sick of us spouting off about all this stuff. Amazing. We've kept 60 viewers this entire time. It's quite impressive. Okay, yeah, I think Cred reached like a thousand fucking Yeah, I mean, everyone, watching it, Cred has a cooler accent than us. He knows big words. <laughs> yeah, sounds smart. Um, yeah, so oil for me, I don't, I, I definitely wouldn't get into any trades here. Um, if I just do my setup, that's the high um, from the daily. The daily, um, you know, to frame the trade, there wasn't even a low pivot. So, I mean, gold, uh, oil's really bombed out really badly. Um, and then we're trading behind, you know, uh, below this week's pivot as well. So, yeah, things not looking too good for oil. When does um, the pivot print? Like, does it print at like zero GMT Sunday? Yeah. So um, every Sunday, these uh, f uh, from 12 hour down to 30 minutes prints. And then every day, the 50 and um, lower kind of prints as well so i wonder if there's a correlation so, between the weekly open and where the pivot is because i mean they ca they obviously come out at the same time well big time on bitcoin um huge amount uh you can i'll i'll, I'll go back into a sec but basically every single time um, and what's nice about it is, is that if you were if you were trading oil at the moment 
um, and you kind of picked up that we were let's just go to like the six hour uh, and you kind of picked up that like the pivot kept on opening lower um, and this was like really bearish uh, shit my daughter's just waking up anyway um so this was really bearish if you if all you had to do every single day was short the pivot right so price eventually um, kind of broke down and all you had to do was kind of short the pivot, short the pivot, short the pivot, short the pivot, short the pivot. You could kind of almost do a weekly open strategy on it, right? Like if you're bearish and Big it time. trades above the pivot and then gets back below it, you just start shorting. Exactly. And then it, it becomes really easy to take the next trade because all you're waiting for uh, or the reversal is you just to kind of open up a little bit higher. And then you're waiting for price to actually come and test that, that pivot. That's right. um, and then that would be your, your entry. Yeah. I love systems that have very clear triggers uh, and bias setters. Like one of the things I have trouble with, with like people who purely trade on moving averages um, is it's like, okay, well, how do you know, right? Cause the moving average is changing as it goes. It's dynamic. So like, how do you know that that's the time to enter? Or like same with the trend line, like we were talking about earlier, it seems like this, once the pivot's there, it's not changing. Right. So yeah. you're above the pivot, you're below it. You have your bias, you have your trigger. That's really nice. Same with like Ichimoku, which what I found so cool. He's like, Hey, when this happens, you do this. It's like, you know, systematic, uh, systematic seems to work really well in yeah. trading. I mean, it, it continuously is like that. So basically, um, here, uh, at the 50 mark, everyone, this is where everyone was really getting, starting to get bullish on uh, oil. Um, and you could see why, I mean, this is, this is a long, long amount of time price going sideways. You see the pivots kind of opening up and down, up and down, up and down. So, you know, you're in consolidation and then you had this like break all the way up on super low volume. Um, and all you had to do was wait for price to break, uh, you know, to close below the, the pivot, and then you could just short the pivot extension. Um, and I mean, yeah. Uh, I did make quite a bit of bit of money on this on a window, um, but I think that I closed out here, um, which was not which is a nineteen percent move, and I never really thought that we're gonna, you know, uh, end up going. Oh god, I don't think anyone <laughs> thought it was gonna get this bad. Um, you know, thinking like oil is like necessary items on the planet, that there would always be demand, but it looks like you know Russia and and. Um, Saudi Arabia can actually control the price. Um, I don't know. Cool. All right, man. Well, I, I think we're coming up on like two hours here, so I think uh, I think that's probably good to call it. Uh, you got any last uh, you know things you want to plug? Are you reading any books? You got anything you want people to check out? You're doing anything like that? Any advice for uh, from uh, from a wise old man like yourself, or maybe some younger people who are uh, you know dealing with their first recession? Because you were obviously uh, you know kind of an adult for the last one. Yeah, look, I mean, um, I think that the most important thing for anybody starting out right is, uh, is just to use your head um, and, and try to get into positions where you're at um, and at resistance, right? And um, never, never, fade the, never fade the trend. Um, rather wait for it to actually, you know, consolidate and get in a little bit later. I mean, Bitcoin price action um, on the lower time frames really, really kind of paints that, that picture for you. Um, you know, you kind of had this this lower move. You got a pivot that's actually opened lower. Um, and today, um, you're kind of looking for price to go below this, and then it's pretty much a short, yeah. Um, and that'll probably trend down for quite a long time because if you go onto the higher time frame, you got a you got a really um, massive pivot range, you know. Um, so there would be a a general trend. All the way back down to this pivot um but yeah so like i said i mean I, I don't get don't get carried away kind of just um pick what you need to trade and how you trade it write it down in a journal and um and learn from your mistakes because you're gonna have to spend a lot of money um trading to actually learn how to trade properly yeah yeah it's the, the cost of <laughs> the doing business fees. it's the cost of doing business people are always uh you know concerned to lose money i think demo trading is a good way to practice but at the end of the day nothing's like actually having money on the line um so you know you're gonna win yeah. some you're gonna lose some you know use good risk management the idea is you want to stay in the game if you get a trade wrong you don't want it to wreck you so much that you can't take the next trade um 
So uh, with that being said, guys, I think we're going to end the stream here. I appreciate Joe, uh, even through all the technical difficulties, coming on, hanging out with me here. Uh, we kind of went all over the place with this stream, but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, so definitely looking forward to uh, doing more stuff like this for you guys, doing yeah. kind of more uh, you know, groups. Maybe we'll get a few people on here uh, for another one and just kind of share ideas because I love seeing how other people trade. It's very cool to see when, you know, there's kind of confluent ideas and we come at them from a totally different way. Uh, I think it's great to be open-minded like that because you never know. You might pick something up and all of a sudden you're now, you know, maybe you're integrating pivots into your system because it helps you identify the trend, identify the level of volatility, use them as SR. Uh, lots you can do there. So, um, hit up Joe on Twitter. I did leave his uh, Twitter in the uh, description of this video as well as in the title. Um, so uh, feel free to DM him. It sounds like he's been answering. Uh, so if you got any questions, you want to know more. And uh, yeah, looking forward to doing more of these with you guys. I hope everyone's staying safe, staying healthy, staying relatively sane. Uh, and, uh, you know, using this time to, uh, you know, better themselves any way that you can. Uh, so this has been Trader Main. I'll be back with another video probably sometime this week and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.